Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to take a look in on the outside in bin. This was my outside bin. And you can see a little baby roly polies there. And I just really did not like the idea of it being outside all winter um, where it was too cold and I might lose the worm population. Here in Illinois, it will get, you know, the wind chills will be 60 below freezing. So I really don't want to leave the worms and uh, have them die down to the cocoons. Speaking of cocoons, oop, well, uh, I don't know if you got a chance to see it before I dropped it. So this bin was actually started outside about six months ago. And it was started with some sod that I had been digging up. And so that's why we're seeing kind of clumps of dirt with roots in them, because that was one of the things that I started the bin with. And over the course of the spring and summer, then I um, added food to it. Last time we were in here, or the time before, we added leaves to try and fluff up this really kind of heavy soil in here. And uh, we didn't find anything odd in here, so I was glad of that. Some people ask, they're like, hey, if you bring things from the outside in, do you get <clears throat> undesirable critters? And um, we did have one weird thing. Um, I put that back outside, but aside from the occasional snail, I do not see um, anything other than roly polies. So they're happy in here, they're breeding. So that's a good size cocoon there. I don't remember exactly where I fed, but I just figured I would go through here and make sure that there's enough leaves and there's enough uh, things to keep breaking up these, you know, tough clods. So yeah, it looks like the leaves are doing their job. Could be a little better. But, you know, mostly I have red wigglers in here. There's, you know, I think I started with the Uncle Jim's mix. But after being outside when it was mostly freezing out, I have to wonder if the blue worms made it at all. And this bin is a little deeper than what my other bins are, so it's a little tougher to really get in there and, and see what's going on. But I'm trying, and of course, take you guys with me. Um, I did want to say thank you for everybody who uh, gives me ideas and tips and tricks, because I'm not an expert. I have been doing this for three or four years, and of course some of the people who watch my channel have been doing this for lots longer. Um, I think the Garden Lady and Worms has been doing this for 20 years. Not YouTube, just the worm part. So anytime that you, you know, have opinions or whatever, feel free to put those in the comments below. Um, I do feed onions, I do feed citrus. It takes a long time to break down onions and root, cro root crops. Um, but I figure in nature, if something died in my garden, like a, you know, potato or an onion, the worms would get around to it eventually. So I'm taking that same theory here and feeding basically everything to my worms. Like if I'm not going to go and put things in the landfill um, instead of feeding it to my worms. So here's a good example. Here's, it's an onion. It's nowhere near being, you know, ready to eat, but they're getting around to it. It's even trying to grow some roots. I think that's some orange because I can smell it, but the worms are in there. And they're eating, so they're happy. So, I'm not sure how many worms I've got anymore in here. I mean, I started with about a pound, but I don't know, you know, what to expect. For them being outside, and there are holes in the bottom of this, so I wanted there to be drainage and everything. And so I don't know if I got volunteers from the outside in the yard, or, you know, maybe some of my worms ran away. I don't know. But there still seems to be about a pound of worms in here, give or take. Hopefully, being in the, the warmish basement, that stays, you know, 60 some degrees. Hmm, they're starting to make progress on those that blue jean put in there in the beginning. I usually cut blue jeans up and use them for rags for a while and then after they're, you know, no longer needed for towels or whatever out in the garden, I usually keep something with me to keep my hands cleanish. 
but yeah, so that ended up being in here. I've actually got a whole project of Eat My Jeans. If you want to see that, I can link that video. Or if you want to see more of uh, videos about the outside worm bins, I have not only this one, but I also have the towers where you leave them sunk into a garden. I've got one in my hostas, and then I've got one in uh, my vegetable garden that I feed clippings and rotten tomatoes and peppers in that I made, so I can link that too. If you want to pretend like winter's not happening, like, like me, um, I don't participate in a lot of, okay, let's be clear, I don't participate in any winter sports, I don't ski or anything like that. And so uh, winter's just time for me to look at seed catalogs and pray for summer. So let's get these guys some food. Looks like they've pretty much eaten everything up here. Got some pumpkin. This has been frozen, so they shouldn't have too big of a problem eating this. So that should keep them for a while. Get some of those dry leaves on top of there. But there we go, there's my outside bin. <laughs> like I said, I'll, I'll link the uh, playlist for this and for the other stuff. Uh, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.